Hi, this is Wendy, and um, I've been using the pump for just over three years. And I use the Minimed Paradigm 712 pump, which is one of the older pumps. Um, still functions just as well as the newer ones, just the buttons are just in different places, but it has the same basic function. And I use one reservoir um, every six days. So I can use one reservoir for two site changes. So each cannula change is three days and one reservoir will last for um, three days, uh, will last for um, six days, so two site changes. So I've already rewound it and that's ready. So the first thing that I do, and I have a little trick that I learned from another member whose name I won't mention, but it just means that I don't need to use needles at all. So I take the tops off of my Solucortev, and actually they are sterile, so I don't wipe them. And I take the top off my sterile water. So I'm using a sterile water and Solucortev um, combination rather than an actovial, which you saw, which you saw on Des's video. And then what I do is I take the reservoir without any needles at all, and I just line up the side of the reservoir over the top of the water. Now you can either, either use sterile water, which is sometimes called water for injection, sterile water, there's lots of names for it, or sodium chloride, and I'm using um, sodium chloride solution. It, it, it does, that's what they use in the hospitals generally. So then I would turn it over, and I do a one-to-one -one solution. That means 100 milligrams of Solucortev, would be one mil of water. So I'm gonna draw up from here, two mil of water to fill two solucorted vials. So I will draw it up until I get two mil of water. So no hypodermic syringe needles or anything involved from there. And you can just see there that it's just sitting on the two mil line. I don't know if you can see that that it's just sitting on the two mil line. And then it just comes off very easily like that. And then it's actually ready. Now it doesn't matter if you put more into one or the other because I'm going to be drawing up the whole lot. So I would just put it in, push it down, and then I just push in approximately half. I mean, if you want to be perfectly accurate, I would push one mil down into one and then push it into the next like that. And then I, I can leave that on there. And um, they do say if, the, if you want to mix it quicker, and, and this is a trick the nurses taught me, was to get the solucorta vial and roll it in your hands like this. This is what the nurses do in the hospital sometimes if they want to mix it quickly. So I sometimes do that. Obviously, if it's got the reservoir on it, it's not as easy to do that. And sometimes I'll do this and then go take a shower. So then I know that it's going to be more, you know, it's going to be dissolved when I get out of the shower. So I sometimes prepare it. And then when I get out, they'll be nice and ready to go into my pump. So because this one's got the thing still on it, which I could take off, it's a bit harder to do that rolling action. I'll just have a look at that. Those are dissolving nicely. Sometimes you get white chunks that you're looking for. And um, you can see this one's pretty much totally dissolved now. So I'll just leave those there. And um, I'm using a Mini Med Neo 30. This is the latest set from Medtronics. Right now it's only available in Canada and the UK. Um, it is going for FDA approval, and then I think it will go worldwide. And it's been quite popular. It has a 13 millimeter needle, which sounds like it's longer than the others. Um, most of them are six millimeter or nine millimeter. This one is 13 millimeter, and it's inserted at a 45 degree angle, whereas the six millimeter and nine millimeter ones go in at a 90 degree angle. They go in straight. This one goes in at an angle and is supposedly better for people with less subcutaneous fat or more active people. It comes as two separate pieces. So 
for people who do use the reservoir for two changes, you don't, the sets come separately. So the, the insertion cannula is separate from the tubing. So today I do need to change tubing. So I'll just prepare the set. I've already taken the main plastic off. I just take that off and then you pull. And to prepare this, all I do is hold it there and pull back and then that little cap will fall off. That is now ready for insertion into my body. And now I need to prepare the tubing. And I see that the Solucortef is very nicely dissolved. There are no clumps in there at all. There's no white flakes or anything. So all I need to do, I don't need to push any air in or anything. I just hold it and I just very gently pull down the contents from the Solucortef vial like so until it's empty so no needle at all so that's the first one finished and then I can pull that off and lay it on my side and then I'll go into the second one and pull down from that one so one to 100 so that means two mil of water to 200 milligrams of hydrocortisone which gives me a total of 200 milligrams which is enough for six days pull that right down and you can just see that it's still nicely sitting on the two mil line i haven't lost any water or anything which you do sometimes with syringes because the water sort of spurts out of the top and then i would remove make sure there's no bubbles i can just give it a flick just to make sure there are no bubbles and i can't see any bubbles and then I would turn it upside down. And this is something in the literature that they do suggest that you turn it upside down <coughs> to pull it off like that. And then I would discard that completely. And now I'm ready to fix it to the tubing. So I will take the tubing out like so. And the tubing has a connector, Oops, a connector at one end. And these are universal for all the paradigm set so whatever pump if you're using a paradigm pump then they would fit all the insertion sets and i think there are about six different types the mio is the most popular one across the world right now and then you just pop it in and twist it until it clicks now there are two ways to load it you can either load it from the pump or you can load it by hand some people like to load it by hand like this where they actually see now if you look carefully now i'm loading it by hand now and i can actually watch it i'm watching it go through you probably can't see it on the video but i'm watching it go through so i can see and i'll see the drops are going to come out any second now from there it's almost got to the end it's just almost at the end and i can see there's no bubbles and there you go you can see the first bubble has just appeared that is now completely loaded without any bubbles. I can see all the way along the tubing, there are no bubbles at all. So I would then unscrew the plunger, load it into the machine. Now, because it has, um, it's rewound, the little plunger has rewound, rewound to here. And this is a really important step that sometimes people forget to do and I have forgotten to do is to wind it back to push it. So even if you do load it yourself manually, you must always go through the next step. So when you press the button, it will ask me to prime. So I'll press this button and you have to put quite strong pressure on it. And I'm now doing that. And if I let go, it'll stop making the noise. You really have to apply the pressure. It's moving the pump now at this stage. Still moving the pump. The pump hasn't got to the end yet. When it does get to the end, it'll make a different noise. There we go. And you see the drops coming out again. And then you must remember on this pump to press escape. I do believe on the Des's pump, the newer pump, you have to press done. If you don't press that, it will not deliver. So that's an important thing to know about the Medtronic pumps. So I need to press escape. Now, this is now ready, it's primed, it's ready to go into my body. 
For this particular device, it's rec recommended to stand in order to insert it. So I would stand up and my old one is still in. So I stand up and I pretty well, sorry, you can see my flabby stomach, everybody, always use my left side. For some reason, my right hand side, they, I always get bleeders. So you can see this is the one from um, four, three days ago. This is my previous one. Um, you don't go into scar tissue. You can see I've got some scar there. You need to find somewhere that is not too close to your umbilical, they say within two centimeters, and somewhere that doesn't have a bump from a previous one. So I've sort of felt around and, and decided that I'm going to go, I think I'm probably going to go here. This is a good spot for me generally. So I'll swap there and just use my hand to wipe that. And then this little guy has two feet at the bottom and you just place the feet flat, totally flat, and it will insert the 13 millimeter needle like that. I will then put my fingers down, apply pressure and pull it out. Now you can see, I don't know if you can see it against here, that's <coughs> quite a long needle. Just place it down and then hold that carefully and I just peel off like so and then I push that back peel off the second part of the adhesive like that and then just make sure that it's on nice and flat now I've got a slight little flat there but that's okay and then I would pop in this and then one very important step some of the Medtronic device uh, insertion sets need you to prime the needle and you need to check in the literature to see the Mio you definitely do for the Mio it's 0.3 um, units for this one because it's a 13 millimeter needle it needs 0.7 so when I press actor will ask me to fix the prime and I will fix the prime 0.7 and it will start delivering that while it's doing that I just like to use a little bit of tape just because I'm clumsy and a bit of a klutz and I tend to get it, I tend to pull them out because I'm not careful. So I just like to put a little bit of um, non, this is um, non-sensitive tape just to hold it carefully. It's finished delivering now and I'm ready to put it in my little pouch and then later, once I'm sure this is running nicely, I'll remove that. And that's it. Thank you.